welcome today we are going to study velocity time graphs now you have already probably seen position time graphs you have probably also got an introduction to what is velocity time graph and acceleration time graph now typically what is a velocity time graph you have the velocity on the y axis the vertical axis and you have the time on the horizontal axis this is just a plot of velocity at various time instants like for example if at time instant let us say t is 2 seconds right so that means i'll mark 2 seconds here 4 seconds probably i'll mark somewhere there so this is 4 seconds now 2 seconds 4 seconds so where will be 3 seconds obviously here right so this is 3 seconds now if the velocity at 2 seconds was 5 meters per second then maybe the 5 meters per second is on this axis you go up like that this would be 5 meters per second but that's not a good way to think about it this height represents 5 meters per second so this would be 5 meters per second this is the point which represents 5 meters per second at a time of 2 seconds now suppose i went from 5 meters per second to 11 meters per second at 4 seconds right so that means at 4 seconds somewhere there would be 11 meters per second so what does that mean 11 meters per second what is 11 meters per second that would be this axis so if i took this point this axis point this would be 11 meters per second this height is 11 meters per second and so this height would be 11 meters per second so on the vt graph this height represents the speed right the velocity well actually it represents velocity if you go up it will be positive and if you are going down it will be negative so it does represent velocity the length itself represents the magnitude of the velocity that is the speed now you started at this point and you ended at that point now how did you go in the middle there could be many ways you could have gone in a straight line you could have gone like this right this curve is called the vt graph it tells you the change in the velocity it tells you the velocity at every instant of time it tells you how the velocity is changing it tells you lots and lots of information once you draw the vt graph now the vt graph can be uh, drawn for any kind of motion uniform motion uniform accelerated motion non uniform acceleration for all sorts of motion you can draw the vt graph for one dimensional motion you can draw it as the time is changing the velocity is changing and that's what it's representing now suppose i ask you what was the velocity at time 3 seconds then all you do is to look at this 3 seconds draw this line now this point whatever that point is maybe this was 6.2 so 6.2 meters per second would be the velocity this length would represents the velocity right so that is the height of the graph that represents the velocity so this basically is a basic idea of velocity time graph but why is even velocity time graph useful in fact of all the three types of graphs that you know actually the most important and most useful graph would be velocity time graph and the main reason it is useful is because you can go from velocity time graph to acceleration and you can also go to displacement now the first key point you must understand is that the area under the velocity time graph represents the displacement so i started at this time and i was traveling for 2 seconds and i was as i was traveling this whole area if you look at this area of this graph right if you take this whole graph this area represents the displacement during this 2 seconds right so in these 2 seconds what was the displacement the area of this graph now this is true in general it is not just true in cases where you are moving with uniform acceleration it's true always okay so you are traveling from here to there and the area basically represents the uh, displacement that you have traveled during this time now the second thing is that if you take any point let's take this point now this graph has a slope right now what is a slope slope is this by this so we call it rise the amount you are increasing by the run so that is called the slope so this by this now this is delta v the change in velocity and this would be delta t the change in time and this by this will give you the acceleration so the second important thing about a vt graph is that slope tells you the acceleration now this is true in general let us look at graphs where we have vt graphs where which are for uniform accelerated motion and uniform motion the second important property of a vt graph is that the slope of this graph is the acceleration okay like let us take this graph 
Now, if you take this part of the graph, you can take any part. If you take this part of the graph, then from this point to that point, you have a slope. It's almost like a straight line. So you can see the slope. And actually, what is the slope? The slope is this distance by that distance. Now, what is that? That is the change in velocity. So we can write it as v2 minus v1, or we can write it as delta v, the change in velocity. And what about this? This is the time interval, right? So this we can write it as delta t or t2 minus t1. Now, what is v2 minus v1 by t2 minus t1? That is acceleration, right? Because it's a change in velocity by the time. That is acceleration. So this by this represents the acceleration. So acceleration is the slope of the VT graph. So from the same graph, we can find acceleration. It's a velocity graph. So obviously, you can find velocity. You just need to look at the height. But you can also find the acceleration, which is the slope. So here, you can see that the acceleration is negative. And as it goes this way, the acceleration becomes more. So it's steep, very steep here. And here, the acceleration is a little lesser. So acceleration represents how steep the graph is. Right? So based on the steepness of the graph, you can find out what the acceleration is. So if I had a graph where it looked like this, the acceleration is less. If it looks like this, the acceleration is more. If it looked like this, then the acceleration is even more. Okay? And if it was like this, it is negative. So in all of these cases, you can actually see how, based on the VT graph, what the acceleration is. Area under the VT graph tells you the displacement. Like So from here to there, this is the area. If you took this area, that would be the displacement in the first one second. And if you took this area, that would be the second, like so time from three to four seconds. So second second. And if you took it throughout, then the two seconds, the whole displacement would be the total area. So this is a very, very useful property in the VT graph. Now let us look at what how to use VT graphs when you have uniform motion or uniform accelerated motion. Now let us look at what happens if I have something where a graph looks like this. Now, what does this mean? This means that this velocity right, hasn't changed. Look at this. As the time is changing, the velocity remains constant. So what will I say about this? So suppose I look at a graph that looks like this. So basically, this distance has not changed. right? This is the same height. So it's a flat, straight line. This is uniform motion, uniform velocity. Velocity remains constant. And so we say this is acceleration is equal to 0. Acceleration is also constant, but it's special case, it's 0. Now, suppose I started with a velocity that was here, and then I ended with a velocity that was there. So this velocity becomes that velocity. So I start here, and I end there. Now, there are many ways in which you can start here and end there. I mean, you could have had a graph where you can go like this, you can go like that. But let us say that you are uniformly accelerated, then this is how you will go. Now, this graph is a uniform acceleration graph. So this is uniform A. Acceleration does not change. It's constant. Does the velocity change? Yes, because this was the initial velocity. That is the final velocity. Now, what is the height of this one? U. What is the height of that one? V. Right? This is the final velocity. This is the initial velocity. Now, what about this time? We Let's call that T. Now, what about this? V, U. So what is this? V minus U, right? So this is V minus U. Now what about this by that V minus U by T? That is A. So the slope of this graph is this by that. Or acceleration into time is equal to that increase, the change in the velocity. So we can write this as A, T. Acceleration is the slope. And the slope remains the same, whether you do this or you do this, or you do this, or you do this. Any portion of that graph, because it's a straight line, any portion, the slope is the same. So you can take the slope, multiply by the time interval, that will give you the change in the velocity. Now, this kind of graph, any straight line will be a graph where it is uniform acceleration. Now, this was a straight line going up. This is a straight line that is flat. And of course, it's also a special case, A is 0. You can also have a straight line that is going down like this, right? Well, if it was going down, then you can see that initial velocity was larger, the final velocity was smaller. So what can you say in this case? Obviously, the velocity is decreasing. And we can say that the object was decelerating. Well, if it was all positive, we can say it was decelerating. Because you can then say that this is the change in the velocity. Final velocity is smaller. 
So final velocity minus initial velocity will be negative. So this has a negative slope. This, here the acceleration is negative. Here the acceleration is positive. So when the slope looks like this, acceleration is positive. When it is, looks like this, it is negative. And when it is like that, it is zero. So you can any of these. So if I start here, I can have many, many lines. And all of these would be negative numbers. This would be zero. Right? This would be negative. And that would be positive. And that will get more and more larger and larger. This will become bigger in magnitude. But the all the numbers would be negative. Right? So this is the third important idea that when you have uniform acceleration, the graph is a straight line. Okay. Now, the last and the very, very important point is about average velocity. So, let us look at that. Now, let us look at this uh, graph. Okay. So, this uniformly accelerated motion. The initial velocity is u. So, u is this point. Basically, that represents this height. v is this height. right? It was at velocity u at time t1 and velocity v at time t2. Now, the area is basically the area of this trapezium. Now, what is this time interval? This time interval is t2 minus t1. That's what we are going to call t. Right? So, if you take this time interval as t, this trapezium, what is the area of this trapezium? This plus that by 2 into this time interval. That is the area of a trapezium. Just think of the, the these two parallel sides. right? So, this area will basically be u plus v by 2 into t. And that makes sense because this is the average velocity. right? So, average velocity in this case is u plus v by 2. Now, if you look at this graph, u plus v by 2 happens to be exactly the midpoint of this line, not midpoint of the motion. This graph is not how it is moving. So, the object is actually moving. Suppose I was drawing the object, it was moving in some line like this. It started here, this is A and this was A, it is finishing somewhere there B. Now B is not the same as this. These two are a VT graph. This is actually in space. So I am starting here and I am going there. So that would be in space, right? Now this midpoint here is mid velocity. Now mid velocity happens at mid time. This time is equal to that time. So if that means this time interval and that time interval are equal, Total time interval was t. So how much would this time interval be? t by 2. And how much would this time interval be? t by 2. Right? In fact, this point, if you had to look at the axis, it will be t1 plus t2 by 2. That's not very useful. This time interval is t by 2. That time interval is t by 2. That is useful. So keep that in mind. And what is the velocity at this point? u plus v by 2, which is the average velocity. Now this statement is not true for all kinds of motion. Like these two statements are true always, always for any kind of graph. Okay? Now, this is true for uniform acceleration. This statement that average velocity happens at mid time. Mid time is not mid point. Let us be very careful. Look at this. This area is S1. That is the first displacement. This area is S2, second displacement. Do you think these two areas are equal? Just look at it. This looks smaller than that, right? So clearly this is less than that. So that means this point, this time did not happen halfway. This is halfway. It did not happen halfway. It happened here. This is mid time. T2, T by 2. This is T by 2 t by 2. It is not distance by 2, distance by 2. That is not the case. So, uniform acceleration, remember, average velocity happens to be the instantaneous velocity at the mid time. So, that means this time is equal to that time. And this is super useful because once you find that you can start using this, if you know this very well, because many times you will have displacement given, time given. So, you know displacement by time is average velocity. Once you know the average velocity, you know that that is the velocity at this time. And we will see how to apply this to various kinds of problems. So, these are the four key ideas that you should know. First one is that area is the displacement. That is true for any kind of VT graph. Second is that the slope of the graph represents the acceleration. Third, uniform acceleration is a straight line. 
like this or like that or like that. Uniform motion is a straight line that is flat. Uniform motion is also uniform acceleration except A is 0. So this is the third important point. And the fourth important point that the average velocity happens at the mid time. So you take a graph only for uniform accelerated motion. You can take the midpoint here and that will happen at the mid time. So we'll use these four points. When we apply them to problems, you'll see that VT graphs can be very useful in helping you solve questions.